While internet speed technology has been rapidly improving these last few years, you would consider yourself lucky when getting a measly 1 gigabit connection. But with a new record-breaking cable technology, your internet speed is about to increase by many orders of magnitude in the very near future. We're about to experience an information revolution. Engineers in Japan have recently set a new world record for internet speed. Welcome to today's episode of AI News. In this episode, I will show you what exactly those engineers managed to create, where it's currently being used, how it was done and how little you will need to wait until you can take advantage of those insane internet speeds. According to a speech which was given at the International Conference on Optical Fiber Communications in June, a group of internet engineers in Japan just broke the global record for the fastest internet speed, attaining a data transfer rate of 319 terabits per second. The new record was set on a fiber connection that stretched for over 1864 miles. And, most importantly, it's compatible with today's cable infrastructure in such a way, that all the big players, such as Comcast or Verizon can easily add this technology to their networks and profit from a 100 times increase in internet speed practically overnight. This revolutionary technology is set to revolutionize the world. I can't emphasize how fast this transmission is enough. It nearly doubles the previous record of 178 terabits per second, which was set in 2020. It's also seven times faster than the previous record of 44 terabits per second, which was set with an experimental photonic chip. NASA uses a comparatively primitive speed of 400 gigabits per second, and the new record soars impossibly high above what ordinary consumers can use. The fastest of which is 10 gigabit for home internet connections in the most advanced countries in terms of internet speeds, such as South Korea. The phrase, internet bandwidth, refers to how quickly data, such as a Netflix video, enters your house. Because data, bits, are so tiny, speed is typically measured in megabits, or millions of bits per second. Some ultrafast fiber services can transmit data at a gigabit per second. Receiving a text-only email requires almost any internet connection, while listening to a Spotify music may require as little as 1 megabit per second. To watch a 4 Kelvin's Netflix movie in HDR at its maximum resolution, you'll need about 25 megabits per second. Bandwidth is directly connected to speed. It represents the amount of available speed for you to utilize, because your entire family will share whatever internet connection you have. So, if two TVs in your house are streaming 4 Kelvin's movies at the same time, you'll need at least 50 megabits per second of internet. As if there were no limit to this enormous feat, the record was set using existing fiber optic infrastructure with a few sophisticated add-ons. Instead of the traditional standard core, the study team utilized four cores, which are glass tubes enclosed within the fibers that carry data. The signals are then divided into numerous wavelengths and delivered at the same time, a process known as wavelength division multiplexing. The researchers used a seldom used third band to transmit additional data, increasing the distance using multiple optical amplification technologies. The new device starts its transmission process with a 552-channel comb laser that fires at several wavelengths. This is then delivered using dual polarization modulation, in which some wavelengths are sent before others, to produce various signal sequences, each of which is sent into one of the optical fiber's four cores. This technology sends data via 43 miles of optical fiber until it reaches optical amplifiers, which enhance the signal for the lengthy travel. But there's more. The signal passes through two unique types of fiber amplifiers, one doped in thulium and the other in erbium, before continuing on its path, in a traditional process known as Raman amplification. Following that, signal patterns are transferred into another piece of optical fiber, and the process is repeated, allowing the researchers to transport data across an incredible distance of 1864 miles. Importantly, the new four-core optical fiber has the same diameter as a typical single-core fiber, allowing it to be surrounded by protective cladding. In other words, integrating the new approach into existing infrastructure will be considerably less difficult than past technical changes to social information systems. This is what truly makes the new data transfer speed record stand out. Not only have Japanese researchers blown the 2020 record out of the water, but they've done it with a revolutionary engineering approach that can be easily integrated into modern-day fiber-optic infrastructure. 
In terms of signal speed and data transfer, we're getting close to the point where the internet of the late 1990s and early 2000s will appear primitive in contrast. It's an exciting time to be alive. Starlink is Elon Musk's capital-intensive project to create an interconnected internet network using thousands of satellites, known as a constellation in the space business, aimed to offer high-speed internet to users everywhere on the world. SpaceX first launched the service as a pilot program for chosen users for $99 per month, and in the last year has sought regulatory clearance to test the network in flight and expand the service to big moving vehicles such as ships and trucks. With over 1,500 Starlink satellites deployed into orbit to FAR, it is currently the world's biggest satellite network. SpaceX boasted last month that Starlink has received over 500,000 orders and payments to date, albeit they may not be converted into users. Starlink's user base has risen, from about 10,000 members in February to Musk's claim that it has reached the strategically significant level of 69,420 active users this month. The latency for the Starlink system is similar to latency for ground-based fiber and 5G, so Elon Musk is expecting to get latency down under 20 milliseconds. They are on their way to having a few hundred thousand users, possibly over 500,000 users within the next few 12 months. Upload speeds are also important. Until recently, most consumers were mainly concerned with download speeds, or how quickly films and online pages appeared in their homes. Upload speeds have recently become increasingly significant since they influence video conversations, including teleconference calls with business as well as video chats with family and friends. Most cable and DSL internet plans provide upload rates that are a fraction of their download speeds. For example, a 25 megabit per second plan may have an upload speed of only 5 megabit per second. Even if you have no trouble keeping up with the latest seasons of your favorite television series, your Zoom conversations with the office may be sluggish due to the video you're sharing for your side of the call. Upload speeds are particularly important if you upload a lot of videos to YouTube or TikTok. Your movies will still play at slower speeds, but it will take longer. In each of these new technologies, it is apparent that the government must invest in fiber infrastructure, which means determining which technology receives taxpayer funding at 100 megabits per second. While existing monopolies would prefer to collect that money for infrastructure they don't have to build, old cable lines that can match the 100 megabits per second definition, doing so would be a great injustice to Americans. Um, well, it will be a, it should be a good experience because it'll be very low latency. Mm -hmm. um, and we're targeting latency below 20 milliseconds. Uh, so somebody could, could, could play a, a fast response video game uh, at a competitive level. Right. Like that's the threshold for uh, the latency. Um, so, uh, so then, and, and bandwidth, bandwidth is a very complex question, um, but let's just say somebody will be able to watch high-def movies, mm -hmm. um, play, play video games, and do all the things they want to do without noticing speed. Right. So what is your opinion on this revolutionary internet speed? Do you believe that the big players in the internet industry are going to take advantage of this and if they do, how long do we need to wait until we can take advantage of much better internet speeds? What connection do you currently have at home and are you satisfied with it? Please tell us your opinion in the comment section below. I would love to hear what you have to say about it. Thank you for watching AI News. We consistently report on the newest technologies that are shaping the future of our world. We'd appreciate you subscribing and watching our other videos. See you around and take care.